friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Hello Bluebird Page Turner stamp set along with Cozy Christmas Eve and Cake Time. So I have stamped all the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers, but first I'm going to grab some pattern paper from the Simple Stories Let's Get Crafty 6x6 pad and tuck that under my panel so I can kind of pull some color combinations from that. So I'm starting with the skin and I'm doing E000, E00, and E11. So I'm going to do the E11 up under the hairline, down the back of the neck. I also put a little shadow on the other side of her nose and the back of her hand. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E00 and the E000 for the lightest. I am also going to come back later and do her ankles in skin tone. At first I was going to do them as socks, but I ended up deciding to do the skin tone. So I will come back to that in just a bit. In the meantime, I'm going to add some rosy cheeks using R000. R11 and R20. I want her skin to be really pale. This is actually a birthday card for my cousin Ashley. Ashley's probably going to see this card and video before her actual birthday, unfortunately, but I am trying to recreate her and her dog Sadie in this little scene here, and Ashley has absolutely gorgeous curly red hair. So for the red hair combo, I am using YR12, YR14, YR18, and then E19. And this is my first time coloring curly hair in a really long time. I'm talking probably eight or nine years. So I am trying something new here and hoping it turns out. And it, spoiler alert, I end up really liking it. So what I'm doing is I laid in a complete layer of the YR12 first, and then I'm coming in with each darker shade and adding kind of little squiggles down toward the bottom part of the hair and then little dots in the top part of the hair or the highlighted area. So I'm also adding squiggles in like the part of the hair to give that a bit more definition and then doing the dots up above. I'm going all the way up into the E19 and then I decided I wanted to darken that up a bit and add a bit of a brown tone in there so I went with E18. The E19 is a little bit more of a reddish brown, whereas the E18 is a little bit more of a darker brown. So I really liked that addition in there. I think it made this combo really work well together. And then I'm going to work my way all the way back down to the lightest, just continuing to add those little layers and do those little squiggle marks at the lower part and the little dots at the top. And now I'm going back in with a second layer of that E18. Once I assessed everything, if you like the shade that it is, you don't need to, but I wanted it to go a little bit darker to look more like Ashley's true hair tone. So that's why I added a little bit more of that E18. Now I'm going to add in the E15 and E17 to that E18, and I'm going to do the clock over on the right-hand side. That clock is from Cozy Christmas Eve, along with the carpet at the bottom, and I thought they would just really make this little scene look more complete and a little bit more homey, so that's why I decided to pull some images from some different sets. So I'm doing that right around the clock face, just carefully coloring around that circle. I want that to be a different color, so I'll get to that in a bit. Um, in the meantime, I'm also going to do one of the books in the stack with this combo. Ashley and I are both huge book lovers, so I wanted to do a bookish theme for her birthday card. So I started at the bottom of the center book with the E18, and then blended up with the E17, and then I'm going to fill in the highlight with the E15. I'm also going to do the little drawer pulls on that little cabinet or dresser end table. I'm doing the E18 and then just adding a little bit of the E15 to blend that out since it's super small. And then I also wanted to add some tea or coffee into the teacup and I did that with the E15. 
And then I'm also going to do the cake over on the far top left. That is from Cake Time. Since this is a birthday card, I wanted to give her a slice of cake to be snacking on. So I used all three of those shades to make it a chocolate cake. And then I'm going to switch to some darker browns, some dustier browns using E44, E47, and E49 for the frosting, both on the top of the cake and then also through the center of the cake slice. And I will also use that combo for the book that is in her hands. Just using a little bit of that E49 because it is very, very dark, but I did want to have this book be a different brown shade than the one in the stack. So going right up to that little stripe on the spine. I'm gonna skip over that and then color the rest with the E44. I wanted that little stripe to be in a contrasting color just to add a bit more definition to the book, a little more personality to it. And then I'm also going to come over and do one of the little pots that my plants are in using that same combo with the E49 on the bottom and the E47 as the mid-tone, and then the E44 for the highlight. Next, I'm going to use E50 and E51 to color in all the book pages. I'm adding a little bit of shading up near the spine with the E51, and then blending that out with the E50, and letting that fade to white on the ends. I'm also going to do the clock face with this combo. And I also added a bit of shading to the teacup. I will add some extra definition to that later on, give it some detail. I used YR23 to add a little gold edging to that book and then also give a gold rim and handle to the teacup. And then I'm gonna move on to her jeans and I'll be using B93. B95, B97, and B99. So first I am adding some shadow with that B99 on the back side of her jeans, also under her top where that would be casting a shadow, and then where her legs are drawn up where the back of her legs meet the back of her jeans and where the cuff is rolled up. And then I blended that out with the B97. And now I'm using the B95 to bring that color out even further. And then I'll put a highlight on her knees. That's usually where jeans wear out the fastest anyway, so they're lighter, but it's also the highest point. So that would be where the light would be hitting. So I use the B93 for that. And then I came over and did another one of the books with just the darkest three shades there. And I'm also going to do another one of the pots in this combo using that B99 first and then blending out with the B97 and then the B95. And I just saved a little bit of room for the B93 for a tiny bit of highlight. And I did flip the shadows between those two just based on where they're gonna end up on the card. Then I'm going to switch to a slightly lighter blue combo. So I kept the B95 and the B93, but added in the B91. I'm gonna do that for the cuffs of her jeans, because that's usually the inside of the jean fabric since it's rolled up. And then I'm going to do the drawers and the doors of this little uh, table, the little end table with this lighter blue combo as well. So I've never been to Ashley's house. She and her husband moved to Florida a few years ago and I live all the way up north in Pennsylvania. So I haven't seen her house, but I have seen pictures and it's beautifully decorated in shades of blue. And then she has her accent furniture. It looks like rich browns and some cream colors. So that's kind of the color palette that I'm going for, things that match in that color family. So just to pull those pops of blue somewhere else in the scene, I decided to do this little end table as like a two-toned look. So I'll do the outer part of the table in some different shades, but I wanted the doors and the drawer to be in this lighter kind of dusty blue. 
So I just put the B95 down toward the bottom in kind of like a U shape going up the sides as well and then blend it up with the B93 and now I'm filling in with the B91 and I will do a second layer of that off screen as well just to smooth out that blend a little bit. And then I'll also use these shades for the outer part of the carpet. I'm actually going to paper piece the inner part of the carpet and I'll show you that when I get to it, but I wanted to color the outer rim. So I'm using the B95 on both the left and the right and then blending toward the center with the B93 and then filling in the front and back with the B91. And then I'm just gonna make sure to color in all the little scalloped detail on the outside edges. And then I will move on to a new combo using E40, E41, and E42. And that's what I'm gonna use for the outer part of this little end table. So I'm using the E42 as the darkest, I'm putting that in the corners and also on the left and right on the top, and then on the highest part underneath the, on the legs underneath the table, and then blending out with the E41, and then I'll use the E40 for the highlight. And then I'm also going to use the E40 to add just a little shading to that plate so that it doesn't look just stark white. Then I'm moving on to some more aqua blues and turquoise blues. I'm using BG10, BG53, and BG57 for her shirt. So the first set of blues was more of the dusty blues that you see in those vines on that pattern paper. And now I'm kind of going for the blue that is in the background behind the flowers and the vines, that kind of um, like a dusty turquoise. So I use the BG57 for the shadows, blend it out with the BG53, and then use the BG10 for the highlights. And there really wasn't enough contrast for me on there, so I did quickly do a second layer and just kind of beefed up those shadows. I also used the BG10 to give her shoes a little shading, but still have them kind of look white. And then I'm gonna use these shades to also add some little tips to my plant so I can have a two-toned plant to kind of pull the blue and the green together. So I'm gonna leave part of that white for now. I'm also going to do the last book in the stack with this combo. And then I'm going to do the last of my pots for my plants, flipping the shadows back over to the left and blending toward the right with the darkest on the left and the highlight on the right. And I did do a second layer on that as well. I used the E57 and the E53 to add a little rim to that plate. And then I just colored over the center with the BG10. I decided to change the color on that. And then I'm using the BG10 and BG53 for like a little blob on the teacup. And then I use the BG57 to add a little rose on top of that. Then I'm going to bring in BG72, BG75, and BG78. And I'm going to use these for the rest of my plant down at the bottom, kind of taking that up into the blue tone that I already had. And then I'm also going to use these on the plant right above it, but this time it'll only be this combo, not fading into the blue, so it'll still look a little bit different. You don't see a ton of this on the plant below. I think more than half of it is the aqua blue part but I do really like how that plant turned out. And I'm going to also add a little detail to her shirt by adding a stripe across the chest using the BG75 first. And I also added a stripe on her cuff and decided to color in the collar. 
and then I decided to darken that up a little bit in the creases and on the underside of the sleeve and the back of the neck with the BG78 and then I just blended that back out with the BG75 and then I'll even come in with a little bit of the BG72 just right at the top and bottom edge of each of those little stripes to kind of help them fade into the rest of the sweater. Then I'm going to use YG61, YG63, and YG67 to do my last plant. I wanted something that had a little bit more of a fresh green in, the, in this combo just to break up some of the blue. I didn't want too much of it, but I thought that this would be nice. And it is more of a dusty green, so it goes with those dusty tones that I've been using for most of the colors that I've got. And then I'm also adding some little leaves around the rose, just using the lighter two shades for the leaves, and then did a tiny line with the YG67. And then I'm switching over to some gray tones to color in the little dog, which is going to be Ashley's dog, Sadie. And she is black with a little bit of white on her muzzle and her paws. So I am using N3, N5, N7, and N9. So I'm using that N9 first and just being really careful with it because it is very dark and I don't want to have any bleeding into any of the coloring that I'm already, you know, done with. So using that N9 for the shading and then I'm going to start blending that out with the N7. Just pulling that color forward. Still sticking pretty close to the outside edges because I don't want to get too heavy handed. Um, a little bit more dark on her body because it is mostly shadowed. Her legs are under her ears and then, you know, the girl is laying on her back. So there's not a lot of it to show. But on her face, I want to keep things pretty light so you can still see those adorable features. So I blended out the N7 with the N5, just bringing that color forward. And then I'm going to use the N3 to fill in the rest of her ears. Just making sure to create that nice blend by always catching the edge of the color previous. And then I'm going to bring that color down on her face as well. Just stopping wherever I think I want to leave the rest for the little white muzzle and the little white socks on her feet. I'll give her some rosy cheeks with R20 and R22. I went a little bit darker since she's a darker colored dog. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dyes. For the inner part of that carpet, I'm going to paper piece that, like I said, using another piece from that Let's Get Crafty 6x8 pad from Simple Stories. So I've stamped that out and I'm going to take an N1 and N0 marker to just add a little bit of shading to that as well. Otherwise it would look really flat mixed in with all of the other Copic colored images. So just those two shades to add a little bit of, you know, definition. And then I'm going to trim that out right on the inner black line. I'm going to be really careful and make sure that I kind of stay on that black line so that it's going to match up nicely with the image that I've die cut, which I want to use the edges from. So I'm keeping my scissors going straight up and down, as you can see, and not curving them too much. I'm turning the paper to make sure that I get a really smooth cut until I've gone all the way around. And then I just had a little bit left there to trim off. And then to help that be a bit more seamless, I'm going to take a Memento Tuxedo Black marker and just trace around the edge of that paper to eliminate any of that white core that would show through from cutting that down. And then I will glue that right over top of the die cut piece. And it's going to look really nice and seamless. Just adding that liquid glue straight to the die cut and then adding that paper piece section right over top. So next I'm going to work on my sentiment and I took a banner die from the Hello Bluebird gallery frame number four and I die cut that out of some speckled eggshell cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to take one of the sentiments from Birthday Script 
and stamped that out in Lawn Fawn Walnut Ink. And I'm doing the one that says Happy You Day because I just wanted something that was super tiny and just kind of fit in this little scene. Then I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card and I'm using another piece of speckled eggshell cardstock for my card base and I'm stamping the other girl in the chair reading a book and then a sentiment from birthday script that says a little birthday wish with lots of love. Now I'm ready to start assembling and I'm going to take that pattern paper that I used as my color palette and I'm going to glue that to cover the entire front of the card. So that's gonna be the wallpaper in this little scene. And I just cut that down with my paper trimmer and it was just slightly big. So I'm gonna grab my Cutter B scissors and just trim off that tiny little strip at the very edge of the card. Then I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn light brown wood grain cardstock and I'm going to add that at the bottom to be my floor. And then for the baseboard, I wanted something that wasn't a pure white since um, the other elements are the speckled eggshells. So I actually cut down a tiny strip of Bristol smooth surface cardstock because it is a tiny bit of an off white. So it'll just match a little bit better with that sentiment banner. So I've got everything set up for my background. So now I can add my images. I'm just gonna fix that baseboard because it got slightly wonky. And I'm gonna lay out a few of the elements in my scene just to figure out exactly where I want them to go on this card before I start gluing things down. This Barely Art glue that I use it is fantastic. I love it, but it dries super fast. So I have started to kind of lay out my images and adhere them down after I know where I want them to go because uh, you don't have a lot of time to change your mind. So I'm adding this little end table over on the right-hand side of the card, and then I'll add the carpet over to the left of that and I'm gonna have my little girl and her dog, Ashley and Sadie, reading on the carpet. So I will adhere them down right over top, just positioning them where I want them to go. I almost always like to start with my largest images first and get those placed so that I can see where the empty spots are around it and use the little accessory images to fill those empty spaces in. So I'm adding the clock on top of that little end table over to the far right. And then on the left hand side of the card, I'm gonna put the tallest potted plant and then this shorter potted plant that's kind of sprawling out, that one's gonna go a little bit more to the left and down in front. So we're kind of filling up that corner of empty space that was there on the left of the carpet. And I am going to just adjust those quickly before that glue adheres down. And then I had this stack of books and the third potted plant that I knew I wanted to put over on the right hand side, but I wasn't 100% sure on where. So I just tried out a few different looks until I found something that I liked and I decided to put the plant kind of in front of the table and then the stack of books a little bit to the left and in front of that overlapping the carpet a little bit just to integrate everything into the scene together and not have like a bunch of separate things but just make it a little bit more of a lived in scene. I'm gonna put that slice of cake right on the carpet next to Ashley's elbow so she can have a little bite of birthday cake whenever she feels hungry. And then I will take the teacup and I'm gonna put that up on the table to the left and in front of the clock. And then I have that tiny little steam tendril and I stamped that in Lawn Fawn Hippo ink and I'm gonna put that right above so that you can see that that little teacup is full of something nice and cozy and hot to drink. And then this little banner is gonna go over at the top left, but I didn't want the hole to show. 
So I decided to get that positioned where I wanted it, right where the hole is above the card. And then I'm going to trim that down with my scissors to make it just slightly shorter. So it almost looks like maybe a piece of artwork on the wall or something. Then to make that look even more incorporated into the scene, I'm going to color in the top edge of that right above that stitching detail. So I'm going back to my BG75 and the BG72. I just put the BG75 on the ends and then pulled that across to the center with the BG72. Just to, again, just make it look a little bit more like the other elements on the card. Have that little bit of Copic coloring. I did do two layers on there just to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of stickles. I didn't want to go too crazy, but I am going to add a bit to each of the plants. Just putting some at the base of each leaf and then pulling that up with the nib. And I also added some to the frosting on the cake, both on top and inside. And that is going to finish this one up. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail. And I'll give you another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and that you found the tips for coloring curly hair and paper piecing the carpet helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. All of the products that I used today will be listed and linked in the description bar below so you can check those out. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one and go right to them. I so appreciate you spending your time with me today, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.